Hey guys, this is John and Austin, and it's another episode of the Meat Gistics Podcast brought to you by Waltons. Before we get going, I wanted you to know that a school of sharks is known as a shiver, a Ooh. shiver of sharks. Did I feel like that. you made that up. Is that, that is not made up. Is that not pretty awesome? See, I mean, it, it, yeah, especially come spooky October season, right? that sends a shiver down my spine. There's nothing that would make <laughs> me shiver. No, it would just make me inhale water. Like if I was in the water, even if they were, well, no, I actually swam with nurse sharks, so if the sharks have teeth, I'm just inhaling There's water. There's a lot of There's variables of needed for why? your fears to be 100%. What do you mean, why? Be the adrenaline rush of your life. I feel like getting atta- attacked by a great white or a tiger shark would actually be better than getting torn apart by a school of like black tip reef sharks that are all like four feet long. Straight up, though. That are, would be the worst. Are you yeah. drowning before you're like bleeding out? No, no, no. I'm drowning before they get to me because so I'm just going. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> That's what's happening there. And then, does anyone have a guess on what a group of giraffes is called? Oh, a Gerard. Did you see it? I, I saw it. But okay. I, After Gerard Butler. It is a tower. A tower oh, of cool. giraffes. That is very, cool. I like it. I think, it. I think both of these, somebody, sure, somebody, somebody just asked a toddler, what do you think these are? Yeah, no, it's a tower. I'm glad we're out of September. <laughs> All right. Um, Couple other things. Uh, Ali wants us to react to a few Instagram and TikTok videos, so we're gonna go ahead and play this. Austin, you have to watch this as we go. Uh, we are pouring hot molten glass Lava. onto a perfectly good steak. I, Why? I, Why would we do this? Because I, I don't it, think I don't think it's gonna be edible when we're done. Who, want, who wants to eat mm, little, little That actually little looks little very edible. Shards. That actually... Oh, no. Oh, no, that's the glass. That part, not as good. The other side, though... Like, if you flip that back over, I, I'd i eat that. Not that side. Okay, I'm out yeah. on... Oh, jeez. No, you... What are you... That's a <laughs> war crime. That's a war crime. Look is at how like overdone a, that is. Is that, so is what that, was is that like a... Uh, is that a cowboy ribeye with a bone sticking out? It's hard to see. No. Your brightness looks down. But is it like, and they just like crisp, crispified it. Yeah, yeah, but hold on a second. When they first take it off, there looks like there's a really good crust on it. It looks like a good cook. There. Looks like ears on a rope around a Viet Cong's neck. Oh, what you that was the glass. About? Was that the glass glowing that was the, the glass. whole time? Okay, the glass looked like it had an, a really nice mired reaction on it. Okay, so no, Ali, I'm against that. No to that. Is that a will of barbecue? That is not a will of barbecue. First of all, I wouldn't know how, how to go about making molten glass. Second one is what now? All right, we're going to have to start this one over. You have to watch this. World star. Okay. The best part about boiling hot dogs is that you get hot dog flavored water. Maybe it's not the best thing. No. But a spaghetti hot dog? No, no. That, my friends, is the best thing. Oh, okay. Amazing. Now, I can't take full credit for this Hold concept. The phone. I saw some that, that part's movies. cool. He's making a uh, comb. Okay. Yeah, I've seen this. Uh, they and then use wraps in it. and marinara sauce and cheese. I'm changing that up a little bit and using marinara, cheese, and ricotta. Why wouldn't you? You're, I, I hate this. this a lasagna hot dog oh, the man. Internet John's East Coast is showing. And said it was a spaghetti hot dog. And because I'm a weak human. <laughs> 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 All right, I love them now. Also, I don't know if you guys have ever used King's Hawaiian buns. Uh, why are you using ricotta? Holy jeez. Holy jeez. I'm in on trying the King's Hawaiian bun three as a. That is the best thing about this video. Oh, is using the, yeah. Okay, but hold on a second. I would be in on this if they left it as pepperoni and then rolled yeah. pasta over it like that sounds and then use mozzarella instead of ricotta no ricotta the mozzarella king's totally. hawaiian bu- they're not the same Jeez. They no they're not i didn't say they're actively the same. the same they're both good or, they're not both good yeah they're both delicious for the millionth time ricotta means reused it is the leftover of what is like junk when they make you the know, good cheese mozzarella you, you know we like you're doing on. this intentionally to annoy me so we're gonna move on i i, I want to i want to also make sure that we're clear that hot dog water yeah is not a good thing no. like hot dogs are not it, people don't eat hot dogs because they're like the best tasting food ever they're they're cheap and convenient cheap and, easy. and fast like they're they're good yeah. but they're not like good no they're just they're good yeah they're so, all right 
Like, and like, yeah. cooking mm. pasta in the same water you cook hot dogs in? No. Just no, no all around to that. All right. So this is Bear gets into a lady's car. It's a TikTok video. Oh, sweet. Oh, that is an adorable bear. See, no. I would be in real trouble if I saw a bear in the wild, especially if it did a human-like thing. Yeah, I mean, that's Bigfoot. Oh. It's a skinwalker, dude. That's not a bear. That it is. It's walking around on its hind legs. It's Why would you close the other side of the door? You want to give the bear as many ex exit options as possible. It's late for work. It is going to tear up the inside of your car if, if it, it gets in, in the there. car. Maybe yep. you should close the doors and you know have a new pet. Worst like, cameraman oh. ever, by the way. That's great. Yeah, not a great... Like, risk yourself. Well, it's right at the level of the fence. There's so many obstacles. Bear. Do they not know the bear's over there? How do they know it's I don't think they know the bear's there. That's insane. Oh, sure they do. They're just confident. Well, they're dumbly confident. That bear's at least the size of Brutus and way more dangerous. He's walking on his hind legs again. That kid is on the escalator. <laughs> Again. Again. This is criminal. Bears don't seem dangerous yeah, no, they know until he, they are. They, they know seem, seem oh, very yeah. cute, very fun. And then all of a sudden it's like, no, I'm an, I'm an aggressive animal. Look at the size of my teeth and claws. See, it's trying to steal the car, dude. <laughs> yeah, no, they they know it's there. You guys are stupid. That is a dumb thing to be doing. Yeah, just leave all your doors open and walk away. What kind of car is that? Maybe that's why the fence is there, to block the make and model. The fact that, yeah, you're they're still just standing close. They're kind of like, oh, ah, here and there, but I'm sorry. you should maybe step away a you little bit. You should 100% step away. It sounds like Says the guy who said he'd probably go up and try and hug it or something. Sounds like that was Austin there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah. I mean, that's that's not a big bear, but it's not a cub. Like, that's probably a 150 to 200 pound bear. It's juvenile still. It's still, but it's not a cub. You gotta yeah. scare it right now, otherwise, it's gonna come back later. If it comes back <laughs> at you, you're in a lot of trouble. Throw a brick right there. Oh, please come up and attack, not attack, chase this woman. It's small enough to ride. You could, if no, you, you if you're gonna, to, gonna be that close, you might as well go hop on it. And, it'd be have to, and, or it'd have to be bigger than that to ride. Nah, Your feet are gonna be touching the ground. Oh, you'd be fine. What's in the car? It likes groceries, I would imagine. It's trying to free a toddler. Yeah, Get back close in. Close the doors. Get back in. Figure out how to open a door. This is AI. Come on, dude. All right. Does the bear get back into the car or anything? Okay. We're going to go on to the next one. La and final. Another TikTok video. And it is a bear. Oh, that's no. got a uh, deformity or broken back legs. This this bear is is either it's just rubbing its. Is it is it drunk yep, and nope, it's some cocaine? Fine. Like it's it was like... just having some fun. No, this is advertisement for Burger King. I've seen dogs do that. Kid in a wheelchair. Or something. I've seen dogs do that sometimes, where they put their back legs and they just drag themselves across carpets. Is it just that bored? Or is it was that like a legitimate stretch? Could have been, or it could be trying to get an itch. Bear, bear yoga. See, that's a bigger bear. That bear you could ride. If you had no TV, you'd be bored all day too, dude. Same bear, no. Oh. Same bear. Not bigger. John doesn't exact know Exact same bear. I don't know my bear sizes. So once again, I'm not good We're at, sure at bears. They didn't trank it, and it's just kind of not working on its back. <laughs> that could be it. Could just be coming and going. It was somewhat dangerous. All right. Um, as I was looking for podcast stories today, there seems to be another strong push for lab-grown meat. Yeah, baby. Like a new push, uh -huh. renewed push. Yep, renewed push. So if you Google, or my Google right now, the top two stories and three out of the top five, I think, were all about lab-grown meat and why you should Shouldn't your Google be the same as my Google? It definitely is not. So it sounds like you're just getting curated to your lab-grown oh, yeah. meat. I, I think it's getting curated to, like, try to curb my more extreme... Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Well, two, the have? top two and three of the top five, then on DuckDuckGo is the same, the top story. It was the top story on Bing. But Brave Search stands strong, as always. The top five stories, all about actual meat. It wasn't until you got down to like seven or eight that they had some story on lab-grown meat. I think it's coming. 
I think we're eventually going to see it hit markets. I think it's going to fail just like Beyond Meat and all of those are, are falling apart. I don't think it's going to work. It's going to be one of those things where it's trendy and cool, like electric cars for a while, and then we're going to find out, hey, have you ever seen the cobalt mines in wherever? Gaia? There's a Gaia. There's some. You don't care enough to learn the name of the place, so what do you care? <laughs> <laughs> have you seen the... The whereabouts of uh, terrible of me. Timbuktu. That's so terrible. Of uh, me. Who gives a crap? But anyways, <laughs> it's bad. Let me tell you, it's bad it over there. It is bad. It's but bad I don't over know there, guys. The name of the country. <laughs> okay. Well, anyways, that's what I think is eventually going to happen with it. You totally derailed my rant. Sounds so like you're it's right. done now. You're I'm right laughing. The, I can't do it. Is this the I New Yorker? You got a you got a paragraph. You're stretching at the whole page, man. What are you doing? You got a headline. <laughs> All right. So our live stream uh, for October was yesterday. We tried streaming it on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Meatgistics. So in case something went wrong with the, the live stream on Meatgistics, people could at least watch it somewhere else. That means it could go wrong everywhere. That does mean it could have gone wrong everywhere. Um, we had some audio issues, but we think we figured out what was doing that. Uh, I was switching back and I, forth dude, from cameras. Dude, I listened back to think. part of it, and it was it was worse than you than you would imagine. Was just, it bad? Just the nor like before with, sure, dropping audio is a thing, but that's fixable. Now, when it's running normal audio and it sounds choppy as heck, something else was going on, so... I don't know if the wrong board was selected and or maybe I heard maybe even after the 30 minute mark, after we went in and changed settings on our own, mm -hmm. that that actually might have done something. So we can probably did it seem to improve it from yeah. there on out? Yes, it did. OK, cool. So hopefully in the future, you'll have your options of watching wherever you want, but you will still have to comment on Walton's dot or yeah, Walton's dot com slash live or meet Justics with the whatever. Um, go click on the the icon for live streaming and comment there to get entered for our giveaways. Um, Patrick? Yes? We sir. said yesterday that we would discuss what our bet is going to be. Oh, cool. So Patrick is a big Titans fan. I'm a big Commanders fan. Uh, Commanders are the talk of the NFL right now with Jaden Daniels, and it's making me very uncomfortable. <laughs> whatever. Nice. What do you mean, whatever? It's, uh, I'm actually getting annoyed <laughs> at how much national media attention we're getting. The only thing that should, should be any national media at all is that the Chiefs are on a three-peat. They're nice. they're going and they're gonna win until Jinx until it. someone else does. It's and now Allie it's gives a to fist win. pump too. Jinx. Like, there's 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 to win. never been a connection between the Waltons and the Chiefs. Period at all. And all of a sudden Jinx. they're Jinx. all like, "Oh, we love the Chiefs. Jinx. Oh, we're all Chiefs fans." You haven't known me my whole life. Ah. Some of it, Chiefs fans. <laughs> some of it, I do just to rattle your belt. They're yeah. not Chiefs like, fans. You don't know me. You do. Not. Are you even K State fans? Did you do that just to annoy me too? Is that what this is all about? No. Are you actually Notre Dame fans, but you're like, oh, no. Kind I, of annoy him. You, I, you, you could label me as a fan of so many other places, but I've, I've hated Notre Dame before. Because <laughs> we've well before I knew We've you. been so good for our entire, except for that little blip in the 90s and the 2000s. How do you not like Rudy? I mean, when, right? he, when he gets in, spoiler, when he gets into the university on his last leg of eligibility, come yep. on, dude. And then gets in on the last game and gets a sack? Yeah. How can you root against that? Yeah. Besides Mike Golick, who else would you root for in a Notre Dame jersey? But, you mean root against? Yes. Yes. <laughs> I, root, I root for anybody in a Notre Dame Root against jersey. all of them. Um, <laughs> uh, Charlie Weiss. Right on. That was, those were hard years to be Notre Dame fans because he was such a terrible human being. Most famous guy to ever go to Notre Dame. Who do you got? Joe Montana. No, Regis Philbin. Who wants to uh, be that's right. a millionaire? He's probably right. That's annoying. I guarantee it. But a stranger right. told that to me when I was at a Dillon's. I was 14 years old wearing a Notre Dame jersey. Guy looks like a time traveler with how much tie-dye he's wearing. He goes, most famous guy to go to Notre Dame. And I, much like John, go, uh, Joe Montana. He goes, Regis Philbin. He like did like a wink point thing. And then walked yeah. off. He actually dissipated right in front of my so face. And no was, one trusted me. It was uh, Rick from Rick and Morty, basically. <laughs> Essentially, yeah. Came back just to alter, uh, yeah, alter uh, the most timeline. Most famous guy to go, uh, what, 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 what. <laughs> That's not bad, Patrick. I do pretty good impressions. You do pretty good impressions. All right. Um, but no, we Patrick thinks the Titans, who are one and three, is gonna end or will end the season with a record better than the Commanders, really who are three hoping. and one. Quiet. We have the seventh easiest schedule the rest of the way. Mo we've gotten rid of Com three seventh away games. Easiest as of last year's schedule. So if you wanted to do, say seventh easiest based off of schedule, I mean that means nothing. So it's 
Whatever. Whatever. Either way, you're wrong. What do you want to bet? Do you want to just do money? No. (laughs) Okay. No, I don't have any money, dude. What are you talking about? The I do want to see you in a pig snout. That would be cool. So much how you guys are dressing up as your... So I would have to do an entire uh, podcast in a pig snout. Okay. You have to do an entire pig's or entire podcast. I'm going to put you in like an old doll dress hat. Okay. Do you know what I'm talking about? Like the strawberry shortcake type of like <laughs> bonnet. Yeah, you're sure. you're gonna wear a bonnet. Okay. We get It'll it. come underneath too. Yeah. Okay. That's sounds fine. good to me. I have no problem. So pig snout versus bonnet. Yeah. So is there a side sub bet? Because you guys play each other. Oh, do we? Oh, cool. Week thirteen, December first, oh, noon. Nice. On well, CBS. Well, we have plenty of time to think about it. One of us is yeah. Maybe we can make it more food centric. That's not gonna go well. Maybe it, yeah. That's right day before Thanks Black Monday live stream. Oh, We're having oh, great content. That, that'll be awesome. Sweet. One of us is going to be in a bad mood for that live wear stream. wear my stuff, right? Woo. Awesome. Can we talk about the email you sent yesterday, last night? Oh, about, yeah. yeah. I was concerned. I'm like, what did I do? So <laughs> yeah. Austin sent an email to Allie and I last night saying we should play charades on the live stream. I mean, we're going to be doing it for five hours, so we got to find some stuff to... To fill some time. Lots of activities. I thought just I got sixty jokes on my phone. Pictionary would be good go. too. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Actually, yeah. Scattered we could bring the little board in. Yeah. I wonder if we could hook the hook our smart board up as an input to our live stream. I bet we could. There's got okay. be a way. I'm sure we could figure that out. That would be cool. Actually, if we can do that, we probably should use that. So then we should play too. we're playing mm-hmm. with the audience, right? For like charades and pictionary. It's like whoever guesses it first. Yeah, it, my my first thought was like we could like play against the audience, and then Allie was like, "Well, what about the delay? How would that?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, crap." Yeah. So, um, don't know. So I think we play with the audience. With yeah. Yeah, I think so. Probably. I mean, maybe we award some sort of small thing for whoever guesses correctly. It'd yeah. be. A, I like the idea. It yeah, it'd be a fun way to let people have a little bit of skill into what's still a random random chance game random, right. instead of just us just totally drawing a name out of a hat yeah i think legally i think we can still do it um so uh it'd be fun yeah, yeah. cool i'm down for that all right do you have anything else before we get to uh meat matters nope okay this is a big one u.s port strike what it means for meat supply export chains the strike could have it first of all for anyone who doesn't know uh dock workers on the east coast and in certain areas of the gulf coast are striking um, the strike could have a notable impact on industries that depend on these ports, particularly in the U.S. meat export sector. According to the U.S. Meat Export Federation, nearly $3 billion in red meat exports passed through those ports in the first seven months of 2024, representing about $100 million in weekly exports. The timing of the strike is particularly challenging as the fourth quarter is peak period for meat exports with pork production ramping up ahead of year-end holidays. Our production and exports kind of accelerate typically in the fourth quarter, and especially with our seasonal increase in pork production and exports. We, we, well, we're really looking at the need to be able to handle and accommodate more. Now, the um, dock workers apparently turned down a 50% wage increase. Triple employer contribution to their retirement plans and they agreed to keep at least the language around automation at current levels. So saying, like, I guess th- that one feels a little vague, I guess, but they weren't trying to push for anything saying we're going to have more automation. So I, I don't know, what honestly, what that means, the language around it. But that's what the dock workers turned out, a 50% wage increase. Yeah, I'm told. I'm told. I don't know. I haven't fact Your sources myself, are told? But uh, that... <laughs> the docks are U.S. docks are some of the least automated, like in the world. When you compare like large sure. import export cities and yeah. docks, but I don't know. I, I just hope it doesn't affect us too much. In the fact of we can hopefully stuff we bring in or do something, we can go to a different dock, go yeah. to the West Coast, do something different, hopefully. Um, or two, if we're talking meat and exports imports there, um, indirectly us. Um, that it's probably more centered around the big boys yeah. and you know most most of what we deal with is going to be 
small to mid-sized processors at best, and that shouldn't be a big deal. Most, most, especially like most of our direct customers, they're not shipping their stuff overseas in large quantities. Correct. Like that, so, however, what starts happening once Tyson, JBS, Cargill can't ship their pork, you can't get them on a ship. They're gonna have to do something with it. So it's gonna flood back into the market, flood the market, and could end up hurting our customers. Could a little bit. It had to be a pretty long. Uh, pretty long delay for yeah. it to really happen. Although, what the heck is going on with the pork industry right now? 99, 99 cent, cent pork butts. I'm actually going to hit uh, Sam's after this and stock up on some stuff because they are warning. Like, the the head of the union said, I'm going to break you with this, and you don't know how bad that's going to be. So, so what, this, I don't know, this get too political potentially, but why can't we just go back and just mandate that, mandate that they be open? Uh, we, we did that, with, what is that with COVID. What's that act called? It's a called? national security yeah, yeah, yeah. interest. There's, there is an act, but uh, Biden-Harris administration said they are not going to uh, use it in this situation. That's just stupid. Like, yeah. Don't it, know why. Not there. We're going to make people hurt. I, I just, yeah, I hate to see, hate to see people hurt in general, but especially when it's something that's controllable, and especially when if, if, if it's related to food at all, it just seems ridiculous. Let me get his exact hurt words, because I think what he said um, was, I will break you. Are you wanting that to be Rocky IV? I, I mean, it is from Rocky IV. Uh, news about, I will break you. I will cripple you, is what cripple the Dock Workers Union oh, you said. Say so, not great. Um, especially ahead of the holiday season. Yeah. I don't know. At the end of the day, I must the optimist you. in me says it's not going to be that bad anyways because we all went through COVID. We all went through the the delays in the shipping industry I then, can't. and we're all fine. Like, yes, we have, we've had rampant inflation since yes, then. Yes, I can't of, take more. A lot of other side effects, yeah. but it, as long as it's short term. If they keep shut down for a year, yeah, we have a problem. If it's, a, if it's two months... Everybody's going to be fine. How long do you think you could live on just a, like a small island in the Bering Strait by yourself? <laughs> like uh, you get there in the spring and you have all summer to prepare for the winter. So you can like hunt fish, stock up food. I have to prepare to live? No. Nah. Yeah, yeah, Patrick's not making it at all. In a, in a new... Allie says five days. In a new unknown environment? Yeah, not very long. You like, don't think so? No. Do I have one? Am I, am yeah, I not, yeah, yeah. you're not? able to prepare for it. Like you're you're making this decision now, saying next spring I'm going up there. And oh, I'm Let's okay. Sponsor, can we sponsor John doing this in a more safe environment? So just With, see if he can do it. Yeah, the Bering Strait. No, somewhere here, so we could check up on you all the time. That'd be awesome. I don't want to be checked up on. The whole point is to go, <laughs> John. I'm just living behind. You want to be, the, John, you could be homeless anywhere. I don't I know can, why you want to be just, somewhere out in the middle of nowhere. So that. None of what's coming affects me. No one can watch you be homeless. That's why you have shame. <laughs> that sounds like what this is. I'm going to be homeless in the middle of nowhere. How long can you last? And it's just like, well, is there food there? No, you have to make it yourself. Ah, I'm probably gone. That'd there. be my favorite part of it. You're looking for finding food. It. Yeah. Have you read the book Into the Wild? Of course. Did you get to the end of it. Hatchet. Okay, but one of those is one of those right. is fictitious. Yeah, that's a good point. Do you know they had to go get that bus? And air lifted out because so many people died. Like, or Because yep. dudes like you are the one to go out there and test them. No, like, not like me. Their limits. They burn I'd their money. And I'd they, make it. You wouldn't burn the money on the way in, right? Good Lord, no. Okay. All right, how, many, how long do you think you can make it? If I had ample time to prepare yeah. forever. Right. Like, I, if it was spur of the moment... One, I might only last like a week because I, will, I, I probably will not have fresh water and you're going to die from not having water. Um, or Absolutely. you're you're gonna get water and it's not gonna be clean and yeah so you create charcoal filters. Oh well, yeah, but spur of the moment, how are you gonna how are you where are you gonna find a pot? Where are you gonna get somewhere to boil it to filter it? Like anything you would need to actually how are you starting your first fire? Yeah, that's what I want to know. I knew it, man. Yeah. That's my favorite. But you prepare. You got time to prepare. You can do it. It's gonna suck. You go down and but stop. it'll be fine. You Mr. Biagi style. I've seen. No, I'm just doing it with my hands. I've seen all the oh, no, just no hold, stick, you're no heat. stick. I'm just <laughs> holding heat. There you go. Yeah, Jaruken. Yeah, flame yep. on, flame <laughs> on. There you go. Yep. All right. Uh, so yeah, we're something we're gonna keep an eye on. Um, one of the things they did warn about is there could be COVID levels of empty shelves again. So if there's anything you really like to eat, make sure you go stock up on it now. So I'm gonna hit Sam's after this. Jokes on you. 
I don't like eating. <laughs> Patrick's actually not as big a eater as I would have thought he is. Oh, nice. I know. I hate it. It's the yeah. Worst. You're not. Like, don't you don't get excited about food. I hate it. <laughs> yeah. It's the weird. It takes it's so weird. much time and money mm. and planning. And I've especially fu- if he has to make it himself. I've Forget argued. It. I've argued with so many women over just like, "What do you want to eat?" And they're, like, uh, uh, uh. And I'm just like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna, I'm gonna decide for us, and it's not gonna end with food." Let me tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh my uh, an update on the beef cattle herd rebuild. This is from Beef Magazine. There is data on beef cow slaughter through the year that does indicate that beef cow herd culling has dropped. The final rate is usually expressed annually as total annual beef cow slaughter. As a percent of the January 1st beef cow inventory. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. The annual beef cow slaughter total will not be available until after the end of the year. But in the first 37 weeks of 2024, beef cow cow slaughter is down 16.3% year over year. So we've slaughtered 16.3% less cattle this year than we did to this point of the year last year. On an annual basis, beef cow slaughter as a percent of the total cattle is 97 and a half correlated with the annual herd culling rate. So we're holding back three and a half percent, two and a half percent more cattle than we held back last year. But because we sent so many to slaughter in the last few years, it's down 16 percent. However, doesn't matter that two and a half percent number is a good sign for the future of our beef cattle herd. Um, I don't know what else that could be other than the beginning of a rebuild um, for. Is this a dumb question? Sure. Is this, could this have anything to do with the rise of the chicken sandwich? So you look at like people more eating chicken instead of beef. So then that they would need less to go, or is this just a whole separate problem? Variable, maybe? Uh, variable. Okay. I, I, I don't think that's a stupid question at all. Uh, I mean, chicken continues to grow in popularity in America, and a, a chicken, a sandwich is definitely part so of that. So they're definitely just not going to, like, well, the, the, the market's not there for it, or yeah. is it? Okay. For sure. Um, yeah, that's not a dumb question at all. Anything to add to that? No. I was <laughs> just like. <laughs> I was clearly asking Austin. Oh, I was looking down. <laughs> no, you were. I was like, I Sorry, looked at Austin. I go, I got anything to add to that? I'm nope, I'm, I'm done. I'm listening, to your, listening to your answer, trying to find like, oh, do I have anything really to add? No, no, you, that was a good interjection, Patrick. Um, I think everything's been shut said. up, Austin. We're talking. <laughs> Jesus Christ, my God. All right. See, this is this is what he does to me. Like I mentioned this on the live stream yesterday, he gets me like giggling at something, and then he just oh, keeps God. going, and he knows that it throws off my. But no, what I did there was just act as as you wanted me to. Obviously. Yeah, that's accurate. <laughs> All right. Amish farmers open off-the-grid meat processing plant in Arustuk. Now, this is from Maine, or it's in Maine. But they have diesel power for their cooler, which is like 18 by 24. Everything else is solar or 12-volt batteries. So all of their saws, all of their everything are solar and 12 uh, batteries. The one guy had a farm. He wanted to start slaughtering his own, and he didn't want to put them on herd or on uh, trailers. So he built his own, so he could just walk them down before processing. Uh, like these guys are part of the Amish community. You've obviously seen them raise a barn, so they probably built it in like two days, right? Amazing when they do that. Um, he says it's a closed loop, and if COVID nineteen ever hits again, we have everything right here. We're trying to make the food supply as pure as possible while trying to take good care of the land and be stewards of what God has given. So it's pretty cool. It's called moose. I forget what's called. You have the article up. Moosehead meats. Moosehead meats. So moosehead meats. If you're up in Maine, give them a, a check them out. You can do custom cutting or they will be eventually selling directly to the public. Three men arrested in charge. Yes, char- it says they're, uh, well, either are or going to be, a, they talk about uh, different pricing, but USDA processed mm-hmm. retail sale. So to do all of that and be USDA is pretty cool. To, when you say do all of that, to be like off the grid? Yeah, yeah. to not just be like, hey, we're just custom. We're right. custom exempt. Uh, but to actually do it under USDA inspection is pretty cool. All right. Three men arrested in charge in Operation Beef Bandit. Uh, this is... Three men stole $7,000 worth of beef. 
There was 25 cases of them. There were 25 cases of beef. Again, what is 7,000 divided by 25? Somebody do that math, math real hard. quick. Day four. So it's a, it's a quarter of seven. So it's 200, it's 185,000, something like that. Or, or uh, 1,850. Right? Somebody tell me I'm right. I've got the calculator. 1,700? Yeah, 1,650. So say say a case of beef is 50 pounds. Okay. It could be anywhere some, from 40 to like 60. Maybe 70. The word if it's case big, there so. is very... How big are you imagining with your hand? Show me a case of meat. Oh, like a... Box size. Uh, What's this? 18 inches? 18 inches? Tall? Oh, and it's thin. Okay. All right. Like, yeah. So 25 of those. We could, You could fit them on that island right there, can't you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Where did I come up with a quarter? <laughs> I saw 25 and started thinking about a quarter. I don't know. Yeah. You, <laughs> you took one thing and ran with it. What was what was the numerical values you gave earlier? Like, you said... Uh, I'm saying it's like $5 a pound. Oh. So what was... No, it's the real surprise is $280 for a, a case of, what, of beef. What were they going to do? Resell it on the black market. There's a... Oh, yeah. Yep, there's a huge black market for beef in but is it for like, But is it for, like, restaurants and stuff? Or yep. is it for people? Oh, wow. Nope, they're so walking around to restaurants and to delis, things like that, and reselling them to and them is this, directly. Okay. Wow. I'm sorry. I'm just shocked that I'm so dumb that I saw 25, and my brain immediately goes oh, we're, a quarter. We're going to clip. Chase will clip that for poor math skills, for sure. What was the numbers? Am I getting them? stupider? No. Well, that's not a word. But the... So, yes. Read the article. No, I think I'm getting stupider. It said, did you say 17 or 18 something? So it's $7,000, and there's 25 cases of beef, so that's $280 a case. Yeah. So okay. they take those cases, they go into a restaurant, they say, hey, you guys usually pay whatever for this. We'll charge you half. Right on. The Who in their goes, yep. right minds would do that? Like, I've no, I worked at a restaurant, restaurant where, owners are yeah, I worked at a restaurant <laughs> where stuff like this happened. Restaurant owners are nuts. Figliominis. That's just, upstate New they York. don't make a lot of money. They don't, and when, like, especially when they have a bunch of idiot kids working for them, and how, they're an absentee owner. I don't know, how, that, how, how do restaurants not make decent money? Because they charge a lot for stuff, that, and they don't pay think, half of their employees. I think that's ah. that Tuesday through Friday when it's no one's there for lunch, yep. and then there's literally you have four customers, and you pay your staff a thousand dollars to be there all day, and then you make seventy dollars on four dinner plates. Or something. And you're usually in pretty prime real estate. And so the rent of the building is over pretty high. Of, yeah. yep. Then you have a lot of coolers and then the power. Oh, yeah, wow. a lot of power. So, yeah, it's a what is it like? I would never. 75% of all fail. restaurants close in the yep. first year or something. It's a really high number. Really high number. All right. Uh, USDA's meat and poultry processing expansion program. So about $35 to $1 million went to 15 small to medium processors to create new jobs and uh, support new plants. So I want to get your reaction to this. I'm going to read from a, 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 I'm going to read a fairly decent portion of this. But so now the beef packing industry faces two major challenges: a tight cattle supply and a tight labor supply, both of which are key to a plant's financial well-being or even su survival. Consequently, the situation creates a great deal of competition for both. There have been plant closures over the past three years as packers faced both of these challenges in the red meat and poultry industries. The situation truly illustrates the financial hardships created in the current economic environment with even older, fully depreciated, debt-free plants. When the situation is tough for large, well-established plants with no debt, one can only imagine the challenges for small startup facilities competing for cattle and employees. They will only be successful if they have a dedicated cattle supply with qualified plant employees and a market dedicated to customer base. There are new and small plans doing just that. However, the USDA's big picture statement about processing capacity does not seem consistent with the business model. My estimate of the current fed cattle slaughter capacity is just over 30 million annually based on a five and a half day work week. With current supply of finished fed steer and heifer numbers each week, averaging 482,000 year to date through the first week of September, use of that capacity is averaging 82% compared to 88% in 2022. So this guy says dropping to a five day slaughter reduces that by 
9% capacity and gets it up to 91 if Saturday slaughter was uh, removed. Over in the pork industry, when Tyson closed their Perry, Iowa pork plant, total industry slaughter capacity was reduced 2 million head annually. The pork packing industry is currently running at around 93%. The packing industry is much more complicated than a plant's slaughter capacity alone. Capacity, economies of scale, labor, and debt are all critical to financial success. I do not believe the USDA has taken all factors into consideration, and consequently, consequently I would submit that the $35 million investment, and he puts that in quotes, might have found a better return on investment for rural America with other uses. What I take from that, what he's saying is... Well, I know what he's saying because he summarized it in the end is the the thirty five million dollars that is given to these plants. He's basically saying that it's not going to do them the the good that the government is saying that it will. I mean, does any government project do <laughs> ever what work? They say it will. I I, I think it's it, what, what no matter what side of the aisle you're on, I think everyone can agree that when government does something, it's it, it has some inefficiencies to it. So is it going to do everything people think it will? No. Is it doing a, a fine job? I don't know. I think the jury's still out on that. But in my mind, it's at least going to uh, what are typically smaller businesses um, rather than just giving a huge corporation just a, a blank check to go do something. Sure. Um, it's at least it, they're trying to do it in a more grassroots effort. So personally never really a fan of just throwing money out there uh, and seeing what sticks um, but if you were to do it in a way you're at least doing it in a way that's halfway decent so uh, what know. do you, what do you think about reducing capacity overall increasing efficiency um, overall like less they're saying less heads sent to slaughter or less places to slaughter increases everybody, all the other plants that are remaining, their running efficiency? Uh, maybe. I mean, in theory it does. I don't, I don't think you need plants to close in the long run. That's a, that's a bad thing. I mean, remember it was like, three, four years ago where every week one of the main stories we would talk about is how people couldn't get their cattle in anywhere for a year. Their cattle, their hogs, or whatever, they were calling plants and they were being scheduled out a year. Yeah. I think if, if everybody's running at capacity, on one hand, that, that's great because people are making money and they need and people need to make money to survive. But uh, when you have a necessity to do more to truly thrive and survive, that's, that's when people come up with new ingenious ideas and products and new markets and um, innovation it, 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 it yeah, requires people to be innovative and the market will grow if if people are only running at 80 percent capacity and they're like man we, we need to be the most efficient we need to run at 95 they're gonna find a way to get to 95 they'll do it if not they'll go out of business and to be honest the people that do there that's pro it's probably better than the flip side you're you let you're letting the market and that just depends on what what would you rather do would you let, rather let the market run itself or not problem is what they're doing now is not either it's usually where we end up is we try to like we want a free market we want a metal and we don't do one or the other mm -hmm. we do a little bit of both and then it's like well what what really worked yeah. it's really hard to say yep all right good thank you uh next one is uh is it safe to eat swollen or bloated meat packages i would not i don't like the term bloated there uh perishable foods like meats and cheeses is susceptible to spoilage from the growth of bacteria and mold when exposed to air. Sometimes manufacturers use modified atmospheric packaging or MAP. It's basically when you have a vacuum sealer and you have a tank of inert gas hooked up to that, pumps out all the air, and then instead of reintroducing air, it introduces that inert uh, nitrogen gas. Or nitrogen is yeah. a common one. So it will have a bubble to it, right? but it still has no oxygen in it or very little to none. I see that, but when I look at that picture, I don't think, oh, that's just processed with nitrogen gas. I think there's something wrong with that meat. 
if it was in a container like this, so to describe, this is not just a vacuum package. Right. It's not a roll stock. It's not, it's not a foam tray that's been wrapped with with cling wrap. It is the the plastic tray with a film over the top. Those, like, just because I know what, like, most of those are going to be bloated. That's what they do. They yeah. throw they throw gas back in there. I'd eat those. No big deal. It'll be fine. Um, if it was a vacuum package that was now bloated, yeah. Stay That's bad. That. I right. will not touch yeah. that. Because if these are bloated, I know why they're bloated. It should be fine. You think you know why? Like not always. You can if, you can make some assumptions. If 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 it if it was if it was bloated for me not to eat it, there would have to be something else. I'd have to open it and it would smell bad. You would have to look. Use your other senses. Uh, look back because the re- one of the reasons they 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 package it like that is because it will make it look really nice. Mm-hmm. Um, Keeps it redder ro- longer. So if it, it if it doesn't look good, mm-hmm. um, that and the look and the smell take the place of the packaging in that regard. Patrick and I just threw out uh, three pounds of ground beef I bought from Dylan's. Was that last week? Was I here for that? Yeah, you were. We took it. Ali was here too. We took it out and it was like gray. And Patrick's like, "Oh, we can't eat that." And I was like, "Eh, maybe, maybe not." And then we opened it. We're like, "No, we're not eating this." Oh, the smell. smell. Yeah, the yeah smell. that was interesting to learn of the smell because it wasn't like putrid in a way like it wasn't like uh, like your fa- your nose didn't come back but you go the way the gas interacted in your note you go that's something yep. there yep. so it's it, very interesting to learn that. it didn't make you want to throw up but it was like okay this is not safe to eat but anyways it they talked to um jacob tool who's an assistant professor of animal science from northwest missouri state university says, assuming the package is swollen due to the growth of microorganisms, it may still be safe to eat, although perhaps not a pleasant experience. So I like Jacob Tool now because he's basically saying, just eat it. Um, take a look at similar packages. If they're equally puffy, then it's likely on purpose. Tool recommends looking for other signs of spoilage, such as an odd coloring, an off smell, or a slimy texture. Slimy texture is a good one. I forgot about that one. That's a don't, top one for me. Don't ever eat anything that like if you take chicken out and it's slimy, just go nope. I'm done with that. Maybe you could just wash it. Nope. So, <laughs> nope. Moving on. So slimy chicken equals bad. Yep. Okay. Slimy chicken equals bad. Uh, all right. So this is China opens up for Argentinian or Argentine. Or, but this says this says Argentine. Okay. Neat. But yes, Argentinian. Um, so just increasing the economic ties between Argentina and China, uh, China already accounts for 80% of beef exports from Argentina. Now I'm all messed up. Nobody say it. Maybe Nobody say it. Everybody shut up. Argentina. Argentina. Oh, God. The, the, my brain is just like in. Their, their paper is called the Argentine Times. That's why you're having a hard time with this. Is that what it is? No, I'm making it up. But it is like... <laughs> All right, anyways, just something to, to be aware of. Uh, si- swine fever sweeps Italy's north. Prosciutto threatened. You just made that up. I did not. You skipped it's a word. because you didn't. Parma. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so Parma is the, the region uh, of Italy. And they're getting another wave of... Uh, I always want to say African swine fever. It is African swine fever. What do I normally want to say? Asian. Asian. Yeah, African swine fever. They're getting another wave of that. And this is in the region that has most of the prosciutto production. So if I can't start or can't continue to get my prosciutto, I'm going to be very upset. Uh, it is, Italy's agricultural lobby estimates that the disease has caused 500 million euros in damages partially due to import bans. The spread of swine fever has reached alarming levels, said uh, President Etior Pradini, warning of the risk to the entire pork sector, which generates 20 billion euros annually. To tackle the crisis, the government is doing some stuff. Nobody cares about that. Um, International markets have reacted swiftly. Countries like China, Taiwan, and Mexico imposed immediate bans on Italian pork products, resulting in a monthly export loss of 20 million euros. However, markets such as the U.S. and Canada continue to accept pork from uninfected areas because we would riot if you try to take away our prosciutto. Mm -hmm. And nobody makes prosciutto like the Italians. And I'm sure there are some people doing it well in the U.S., but not as well. 
Uh, appeal against Massachusetts pork ban gets support from 22 states, and one of them is Iowa. Um, so we don't need to read the article. I just want to kind of talk about it. Basically, Massachusetts is saying for pork to be sold in our state, it has to have these standards where the pork was raised. And Iowa and 22 other states are trying to sue them over that. Their basic thing is saying, hey, you can't tell us how to raise our hogs. We're not going to, you know, do whatever you want. But they're not really telling them how to raise their hogs. They're just saying, we don't want your hogs sold here. And I would kind of say that's Massachusetts' right to do that. Oh, uh, it's kind of interstate commerce, and you kind of get into a fuzzy area because states' rights wouldn't disagree necessarily. But a lot of stuff that goes between states, the the feds use like the inter interstate commerce clause to do a lot of things. Yeah, and so I think they could pretty easily take that authority. Even though I'd I'd probably argue for Massachusetts, be able to do what they want. I think. I think they lose in that scenario. So what it's gonna, what it would do is it really hurt the Massachusetts uh, consumer more than it, yes, it close a market to, you know, the Iowa uh, pork producer, but it's really just gonna raise the prices insanely in Massachusetts. True. So if that's what it's gonna do, they'll they'll learn from their mistake. Consumers so. elsewhere should win. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So. All right, moving on to, nope, you're going the wrong way, John. Uh, wild game. That's not what we call this segment. Wild card. Wild card. Yeah, I'm off today. I've been off for, for multiple days. Uh, vegetarian possums eat meat when the weather is cold. First of all, I want you to click on that article. I want you to see. All right, that is a possum in Australia. That's what a possum looks like in Australia. That's weird. They're far cuter than ours. Mm -hmm. I met an Australian guy um, when I was on my honeymoon. He's like, let me ask you a question about America. Why do you guys hate possums so much? And I was like, well, because they're disgusting. They're filthy creatures. And, they, you know, and he's like, mm, they're not. So he showed me a picture. And that's when I learned that possums are cute in Australia. <laughs> we have the same have name one. for two different animals. That's a is that not a marsupial? What's a better marsupial? I was figuring an elephant or a rugged. tiger. And Alex Trebek would slap you for that answer, sir. That's an old jerky boys bit. Um, but yeah, it's the same thing as deer, right? Like they're vegetarian, but when they were trying to uh study birds, they put out all these nets and they kept coming back. The scientists kept coming back the next day. And finding holes eaten in all their nets, so they set up a camera. And it was birds coming or deer coming and eating the birds out of the nets. If you're like, hungry, you can eat what you can. Yeah, it's protein, so they're wild animals. Uh, scuba divers have a once in a lifetime close encounter with a great white shark near Catalina. This picture is of a scuba diver swimming directly over a 15 foot great white shark. Said that they were setting up some sort of camera and you can see it in the video and then all of a sudden just turn real quick and there's a great white swimming right by him and they were thrilled by this experience That's what is wrong with people who use the ocean could have been your last experience there was sir. one guy vic hislop from australia who was just like no kill them all kill them all like that was his he's like just kill them all like get rid of them you have no idea how dangerous they are, how much, you know, negative impact they have on seals, on blah, 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 all these things. Now, that's probably unrealistic, but I'd surf if there were no sharks. I don't know if that's a deal everyone's willing to make, but I would go in the ocean if you guys got rid of all the sharks. What about, like, giant squid? And no, I'm not like scared that. of them. Oh, dude, I'd be petrified. They stay so far down. That's what I'm afraid of. That's what they like used to say big. about sharks. No, they didn't. I don't know. Yeah, no, definitely they not. Never. Nobody ever said that. <laughs> Now, Megalodon might be all the way down there. It's possible. Uh, Nigerian zookeeper mauled to death by lion after leaving the safety gate open during feeding. So this guy had been feeding the lions for years, forgot to close some safety gate one time, and the lion's like, yep, fresh live meat. Thank you. Well, you mean captor, your captive? Yeah. Eats, your captive fought back and won. Eats captive uh -huh. in, in a truly come from behind story uh it's a true in the, underdog in the fourth it's quarter. an undercat story yeah uh 
a second lion had killed somebody at that same zoo that same year, like a different lion. Dude, shut the zoo down. What are right? You doing? Just, okay, in, you guys in, don't know. In an amusement, amusement park, it's over. Take the lions away from them. Be like, you guys can't handle these. Yeah, Something's kind of wrong right. with your training. So That's wild. Yeah. Uh, a tiger claimed its fifth victim. I don't know why I'm laughing at that. Uh, in Kerry, uh, it was killed while mowing his, gla- or his grass. There are definitely man-eating animals out there, and it seems like a large portion of them are cats of some sort. So why does anyone have a small cat in their house? If that cat mm. was big enough, it would eat you, 100%. One of my fireman buddies told me a story. He's like, you know what we find when we find a dead body that's been in a house for a long time and they had a dog? And he was like, what? He's like, we find a dead person and a dead dog. The dog's almost always right by the person. Right, so person dies, dog expires from lack of food and water. Because you know what we find when we have a dead body that's been dead for a while and mm-hmm. cats? Because we find the dead body and some perfectly happy cats. Because they just start eating. That's bad. Yeah. Well, hold on. They might be like, I don't want to. No, I don't think that's accurate at all. No. I think they're probably like, finally, I can eat this idiot. I can't. Who it... fed me and let yeah, me poop and pee in their house. And finish eating our food. Yeah. Not a you is horrible. Uh, I can't. Uh, oh, I got a hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then they throw up on it. Uh, all right, Fat Bear. Do you, are you aware of Fat Bear? Uh, it's a like, contest where they take pictures of all these bears who are fattening up for winter, and every year they vote on like which bear was like the best fat bear. Uh, but it was delayed after one bear <laughs> killed another bear that was tracked like for the program. Wow. Um, this is apparently at least the second bear that this male bear has killed. Both of them were female bears. They were talking about like something must have happened to that bear where it just acted injured or looked injured. Uh, there is video of it. I don't, it's not in that story. Um, but they found, they found remains of a, a different bear a couple of years ago. And then they, they got this one, at least the feeding they got on some some video so wild just stay card wild card i want to make another dennis from always sunny joke but can't do it on the can't do it on the podcast just another reminder that bears are terrifying monsters wild animals are wild people forget that yeah sometimes though i man it would really depend on my mood like, am I happy and, oh, everything's... No, I'd probably just panic and run. Like, Patrick asked me what my bear scream is, and it's like, ah, hey, hey, bear! As I'm sprinting the other way, because I'm not standing my ground, especially not against a grizzly. I don't taste good. Like, I might hide behind a tree, like, to try and break up its charge or something, but... Ask a cat. I don't even taste that. Yeah, go get a cat. Go get a kitty. Mountain lion tastes amazing. Be a might be a good option to have a cat and get into an uh, issue with the bears. Throw it at throw, it. Throw, throw the yeah. bear at the cat and appetizer while you get away. You ever seen the dogs that chase off the bears? Mm-hmm. Like yeah, small dogs will just wild. be like, yep, nope, I'm at you. And they just go right just at them. The bear the doesn't know what to do. It's like, like, what, what the heck yeah. is this? I can't fight this thing. It's too fast. Heck yeah. They just run out. All right, you got anything else? Nope. We're good. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, everybody. Thanks for checking out the Meat Jistics Podcast. To shop everything but the meat, head on over to Waltons.com. To get your meat processing questions answered by experts and enthusiasts alike, head on over to our online community at MeatJistics.com. Waltons, everything but the meat.